hello, hello, and welcome again uh, to the Chin Up Show. This is uh, episode number 20. So we've made it to 2 0. Thanks uh, to God and to the team here who has been serving uh, the Lord uh, so faithfully these past so many weeks. Um, I'm uh, just a little bit uh, physically uh, uh, tired because of the long trip the last week, but I'm excited uh, to be able to do this show today. Uh, those of you who don't know who I am because you've never followed any uh, of our uh, news or shows before, uh, I'm Kenneth Chin, and uh, some people know me as Pastor Kenneth. And again, I'm really happy to welcome you to this episode. So let me tell you what uh, happened uh, the last uh, so many days, uh, at least the last six days, uh, that's caused me to be a little bit uh, physically uh, tired, and that's why you probably hear from my voice uh, a little bit of a sore throat, but uh, I'm uh, getting better uh, with every hour, so we praise God for His healing. Amen. God is good. Uh, last week, uh, we were looking uh, at the whole uh, event, uh, the exciting event, uh, down south, uh, we call it Revo Iskanda, and uh, it was uh, driven or powered by Ex Iskanda uh, under the leadership of Pastor Paul uh, and Cheryl and the team there. And uh, we were so, so blessed to be able uh, to drive down. Uh, it was not just me and my wife uh, in one car, uh, but also uh, we had Elder Shirley. Uh, there, we had Pastor Stephen and Pastor Daniel there, and Pastor Yvonne there. In fact, uh, I counted about five pastors and uh, one elder. <laughs> and uh, we represented uh, different church plants, which was really exciting. Uh, there was uh, ex Subang there. I think there was ex Semenye there. Uh, ex Singapore was represented. I think ex Nilai as well uh, was represented. And of course, ex Iskanda. So about five church plants. And uh, I thought that was really, really cool to see the support uh, of all our family uh, from different parts uh, of uh, Selangor and even uh, Malaysia and even Singapore. Uh, our Singaporean family uh, took, I think, uh, not public transportation, but sort of like they hired a van. Others drove up. And I think, uh, Shirley, if not, not mistaken, how many people do you think came from Singapore? about 10, uh, so that's a good group, about 10 from Singapore. And I think altogether, uh, the volunteers from just ex-churches were probably closer to about 30 maybe. Yeah, and uh, we even had Pastor <coughs> Stephen, right? Uh, as in Pastor Stephen from uh, ex uh, Semenye. Yeah, uh, and he uh, came down as well, uh, meeting together with his twin, uh, Sam, Samuel. And uh, Samuel actually uh, preached for Ex Iskanda on Sunday. That's what happened. Usually Ex Iskanda has their uh, worship services on a Saturday and uh, they couldn't have it on Sunday because they had Revo Iskanda. So they uh, brought it forward to Sunday. Now, had I known that earlier, I would have probably stayed back uh, one night, one more night, and uh, maybe uh, preach for Ex Iskanda. It's been a long time since I've done that. Uh, but, you know, with all the busyness uh, and all the different planning and all the, you know, different logistics and arrangements, uh, none of us really uh, highlighted that. Uh, then when I was in uh, Iskanda, uh, some of the Singaporean uh, partners said, Pastor, we're staying back one more night uh, and we're going to attend X Iskanda because, you know, we're looking forward to hear you preach. And I'm like, ah, uh, no, uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm honoured. I'm honoured that they would want to stay back one night uh, to attend Ex Iskanda so that they can uh, hear the word of God from uh, me. Uh, <clears throat> you know, they probably thought that I was preaching in Ex Iskanda because they checked the schedule in Singapore and realised that I was not preaching in Singapore. So they thought, okay, if pastor, pastor is coming to Singapore but he's not preaching in Singapore, means he'll probably preach in Iskanda. Anyway, thank you, uh, those partners who stayed back from Singapore, uh, and uh, Samuel was the one who preached for Ex Iskanda uh, on uh, Sunday. He's not preached for a long time, maybe over six months now, and so I think he had the word of the Lord for the day, for the season, and I'm sure everybody was blessed. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> let me tell you a little bit about our drive there. 
my wife and I decided to go one day earlier. You know, the drive to uh, JB, uh, Johor Bahru, uh, it's, uh, it can be taxing uh, from Malacca to uh, JB. And uh, I used to be able to do it easily. I can drive to Singapore and back on the same day uh, and not feel tired. Uh, but I guess once you pass uh, 50, uh, you know, uh, the challenges begin. Uh, and I don't want to use it as an excuse because I think we can still be strong in our, our older age, right? Uh, like Caleb of the Bible. But, uh, you know, I do feel it uh, these days. Uh, and uh, driving back seems to be a bit easier. Driving to, uh, you know, can be a little bit challenging. So, my wife and I, because we didn't take a break last year, uh, not even for our anniversary and my birthday, which I usually do take a few days off, uh, but last year was a really, really uh, busy year for us. Uh, even... On our anniversary last year, I was, um, I should say I was privileged. Huh? I, did, I shouldn't say I was, I had to, I had to, I had to. I don't want to say I had to. I, I was privileged uh, to officiate a wedding last year uh, on my own anniversary day. Uh, so I, I couldn't go away. Uh, so uh, Sandra and I, uh, my wife and I thought that we would uh, do a day in Malacca. And so we went a day earlier, went to Malacca. And uh, I tell you, it was really, really quite uh, enjoyable, quite restful. We went to one of our favorite hotels, uh, and then the next morning, you know, just um, yeah, relaxed. Uh, went and went to buy some kueh. Uh, those of you who might not know what kueh is, is is a, a, a Malaysian uh, name for small, tiny cakes. Um, I mean, I don't know what else I can say, but you know, it's just sweets uh, and uh, all kinds, all types of. Uh, sweet cakes and, 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 and sweet stuff. So we wanted to buy something for the team uh, so that we could take it down to JB and not, uh, let the team have it for breakfast or whatever it is. Uh, I say breakfast because X Church is going through her 21 days of uh, prayer and fasting. We call it U-turn here. And so we had a good time in Malacca, my wife and I, and uh, had a, lot, a bit of a, like a 24-hour uh, break. And then from Malacca to JB, it was easier drive. Uh, and I got to JB from Malacca in about two and a half hours. Uh, and it was good. So we checked into our hotel. Uh, this particular chain of hotel has recently upgraded me to gold member. And I've never tasted what gold member meant. You know, because silver was like, I think at the most they give you is a possible late checkout. You know, from 11 to 12, maybe at the most one o'clock. Uh, and uh, because I'm gold now, I tested out this hotel, uh, and uh, they gave me an upgrade of my room all the way to the executive floor. They gave me a uh, use of the executive lounge uh, where we could have uh, drinks and you know uh, snacks any time of the day, uh, and they will also serve uh, like evening cocktail from 5.30 to 7.30, which Sandra and I couldn't do because we had to go and join the team at the recce, uh, and so anyway, it's not a big deal. We went into the lounge, saw it, uh, had a drink, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, it was good. Uh, and when we asked for late checkout, they gave us even 2 p.m. Uh, to be uh, the late checkout, which is good. So And they threw in a complimentary breakfast. Now, the breakfast itself in this particular hotel uh, could cost up to be about, I think, 70, 80 ringgit uh, per head, just breakfast. Uh, so, uh, Sandra and I, uh, you know, were blessed. Uh, and uh, so then we, uh, as I said, went to join the team. Uh, they were already uh, at the venue, which uh, was the Stella International School. And I must mention this name uh, because the leaders uh, and the directors of Stella International, uh, they are Christians. And when they found out that uh, we were going to do Revo Iskandar, they offered their venue. Their hall is, isn't very big. They have 600 students, I think, uh, thereabouts, in Stella International School in uh, uh, Iskandar. Uh, but their hall is really small, and that's why they have to divide their assemblies. I think they have about three assemblies, because each time, the hall can only take about 220 maximum, and that is really pushing it to the doors uh, and the walls. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we uh, were able to put out chairs, about, about 150 chairs. Uh, we were expecting about that many people to come. And the staff there uh, in uh, SIS, Stella International School, 
uh, was really, really helpful. They went the second mile and they said, you know, I, every time I thanked them, they kept saying, glory to God. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, we want to do this uh, for, for God. Uh, we see this as a service unto the Lord. And uh, there was a lady uh, named Chang, I think. Uh, and uh, she was, you know, there most of the time. And she was even helping us with, uh, you know, we used their canteen uh, to uh, eat, uh, to, um, uh, yeah, feed our volunteers. And they were really, really good. Uh, they were kind. They were thoughtful. They were clean. And uh, no problems at all. No problems whatsoever. So, uh, big thanks again to uh, the leadership of Stella International School who refused to charge us any fee uh, for the usage of the hall uh, and, uh, you know, the staff who came around to help us. So what uh, we did, uh, Shirley uh, suggested it uh, because we had Revo store there and all our books were there already uh, for sale. Uh, Shirley said to me, Pastor, uh, since they didn't ask for any love gift, uh, should we and can we actually give them a gift of our books? And I said, great idea. And so Shirley arranged to take some of our uh, titles, some of our good uh, winning titles. Uh, I think she put, probably put together about eight to ten books. Uh, and we gave it as a gift uh, for their library, which was just next to the hall. And so again, uh, thank you, Stella International. Uh, we really appreciate your partnership. Uh, and uh, we give thanks to the Lord. Uh, we started on a Saturday uh, with uh, the Academy. So we have something called Revel Academy, where uh, it's, it's very much a sit-down thing uh, and a learning of what God has done uh, through Revel and uh, what He can do through Revel and how to do it uh, and the support uh, that the Revel office gives to leaders around the country especially, who wants to participate uh, in a Revo event or a Revo activity. Uh, Revo uh, is short for revolution. And in that word revolution, if you look at it backwards, there is the word love very clearly um, spelt there, L-O-V-E. And so for us, it is a revolution of love. And we go back to our schools and love our friends and love our classmates, and love our teachers, even the disciplined teacher, love our principal, the headmaster, the guru basa, uh, love, uh, you know, the, the cleaners who clean the school, the canteen uh, staff, uh, love uh, even the guards that are there at the guard house, uh, you know, uh, by just giving them practical things, a drink, a cold drink in a hot afternoon, uh, a nice uh, handwritten card, you know, that we appreciate you, teacher, that we think you're the best, you know, that we are praying for you. And maybe sometimes they even put a note, Jesus loves you, God loves you, and so do we. And uh, through the years of doing Revo, uh, so many hundreds or thousands even have been blessed through the act of love and the act of kindness from our students and campus students and young adults. Uh, and it's gone all the way even to offices. Revo at Work uh, was started by some young adults many years ago. And I think in some places, it still carries on. So Revo is really an, an act, a practical act uh, of love and kindness. Uh, and uh, that opens the way for us uh, to share deeper things of God. Uh, and uh, we have got, you know, at least a thousand, if not two thousand testimonies by now since the day we started. Once upon a time, I think in Malaysia, we had 360 schools uh, that participated in Revo. We call it recess Revo in schools. And then the campus uh, students took it to the colleges and universities. And we had about 80 to 90 colleges and universities adopting uh, Revo as a movement. And then, of course, uh, Revo at work. So during the Revo Academy, <coughs> excuse me, we share um, all these stories uh, to inspire people who have never heard of it, have never done it before, uh, to take it up and to impact their schools and their campuses and their workplaces uh, with the love of Jesus. Uh, through practical action. Uh, and uh, so uh, in the academy, we also teach people how to, and we take questions and answers, and uh, we sign people up. We give them even free uh, publication. If they sign up uh, to uh, participate in Revo, uh, we give to each school, each school that participates, one free Revo book. 
Uh, and uh, is the Revel book somewhere here? Oh, there you go. Pray, listen, and obey uh, is our three key words. Uh, there's a W after obey, uh, and that is witness. So it's pray, listen, obey, and witness. And for short, P-L-O-W is plow. And that's our desire. We want to plow the land. We want to plow our schools and our universities. We want to plow our marketplaces and our workplaces with the love of God and really break the fallow ground, break hardened hearts with the love of God so that they will have a chance to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, that sometimes takes time. We don't only love people just because uh, we want uh, to bring the gospel to them. That is a huge uh, reason why we do it. But we also just want to love people because uh, they are human beings, right? Fellow human beings uh, who are made in the image of God. Uh, and uh, the Bible says, Oh, no one anything but love. Uh, I think that is in Romans 13, verse 8. So that uh, book, PLO, uh, Pray, Listen, Obey, we sometimes call it the Revel book, is given out free uh, to uh, schools and to campuses, one per campus, one per, uh, per school, uh, so that they can read it together, study it together, and find out how to do it. So Revel Academy was well attended. I think, uh, Shirley, what, what is the number you think? Uh, I think uh, maybe about, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it looked to me like about 70, uh, close to 80, including, of course, uh, the team from uh, Axe Church. Now, uh, we all were preparing for the night. The night was the big night. We call it Revel Party. P-A-R-T-Y stands for preaching about revival through youth. We really believe that God has revival planned and in store for this country. If you believe it, say amen. And uh, I've been believing it for many years. I believe today revival is standing at the door of Malaysia and knocking. And I believe that those of us who hear and open the door will experience the greatest revival that Malaysia has ever experienced. Uh, so, uh, preaching about revival through youth is something that the Lord has given to us as a ministry for now uh, nearly 29 years. And I believe the time has come uh, for us to see it here in this nation and also in Singapore and uh, the region around uh, Malaysia. Uh, and so I think uh, surely about 100 over came for a uh, Revel party. 110. One, uh, and uh, so uh, it was uh, really good. We had pastors there that joined us. We had different churches uh, and different schools and different uh, universities come to join us. Uh, kudos again to uh, Ex Iskanda for having, you know, plowed the land and done their homework, their flyer and invited pastors and leaders and their friends to come. And it was great. Uh, you know, it's always challenging uh, to have uh, a variety of age groups there, meaning to say that we had people as young as probably uh, six there to uh, maybe uh, 46, you know. Uh, and uh, it wasn't easy. Uh, but, you know, whenever the Spirit of God is there, nothing is impossible. And God moved in, in a beautiful way, in a sovereign way, and the end result of the night is that we saw eight salvations and about five rededications. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, now the follow-up is uh, being done. And we thank God even for one, right? For one. The Bible says even if one uh, comes uh, to the Lord, the whole heavens rejoice. Angels are rejoicing. What more? Eight people. So is it not a worthy trip to have made? Yes, it is. More than worthwhile. And uh, we celebrate this win uh, together with all our church plants that were there, all our partners and leaders that were there. Ex Iskanda, uh, we celebrate with you and also with all the other uh, churches and campuses that came. Uh, you know, someone asked me whether we were doing this just for Ex Iskanda. No. Whenever we do anything national, like Revo, uh, and any conferences that we do that's national uh, in its nature, uh, we don't just do it for X Church. In fact, X Church is used to serve the nation. X Church is used. We pay our own way. Uh, we, you know, spend uh, the time. We, you know, the team left at about eleven ish at night on Saturday night, and only arrived back uh, into KL at three in the morning, three thirty, 
and uh, they went home and probably went to bed only by 4, 4.30, and then they had to be up again at 6 uh, because some of them had to go uh, to anchor their church plants at 7, 8, you know, some as early uh, uh, as uh, 9 in different parts. Uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, I don't know whether our people even had two hours of sleep uh, that morning. But this is the price we pay every time we do a national thing. Uh, that means doing something for the nation. And Revo is a Malaysian uh, uh, thing, or rather a gift to Malaysia. Of course, Revo has gone around the world already. But in Malaysia, we really believe that uh, when we do it, we do it uh, as a blessing to the nation. So I told the pastor there, I said, uh, you know, for example, the eight people were saved, five rededications, uh, is not all going to ex -Iskanda. That's not our purpose. If no one takes them, uh, no one uh, follows up, then ex Iskanda will be more than happy to take them up. Otherwise, anyone who brought them, they will be the first ones to take them back to their churches uh, and their ministries. So it's very, very important to understand this. We're not here just to build our name, X Church. We're not just here to build our church, not just here to populate X Church. We're here to populate the kingdom of God and to populate heaven. Amen? Uh, so that was uh, really a joy to be able to do that. Uh, uh, Pastor Andrew and I got into our car and we were going to go to Singapore. <clears throat> we were going to drive to Singapore that very night. Uh, but we had uh, our team, some of our team members uh, come up to us and say, Pastor, look at this app, right? We just turned on this app that shows us uh, the uh, traffic condition at Causeway or Tuas. And at about 11.30, when I was ready to go, uh, Tuas and Causeway were jam-packed. Uh, Chock-a-block, okay? Uh, they were, you know, the traffic uh, jam started as we, as, we, anyway, as we saw cars going into uh, the uh, JB immigration. And right after the JB immigration, jam all the way to the Singapore immigration and after that. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> what happened was, uh, thank God for two friends uh, in the form of uh, uh, Kun and Lin Ong. Uh, they said, hey, let's go somewhere for Mama, right? Uh, and we found a Mama very nearby, uh, Stella International School. And so we went and uh, we ate and uh, had a drink and had a really, really good chat. And for about an hour, we were there. Uh, and Kun, as I was ready to go, I said, Kun, I think it's late, no? 12.05. Uh, and, um, and, and Kun said, let me check again. And so he checked and the causeway was still uh, packed. The causeway into Singapore was still jammed. Um, so he said, to us, a little bit better, but it was, it was half, half uh, as bad. And so uh, I said, yeah, but Kun, you know, I can't take too much more of your time. You guys got to go back to sleep. Uh, Sunday was the next day, of course, and uh, Lynn had to preach for, for uh, their church, FGC. And so I didn't want to take up any more of their time. So I took a slow drive uh, to Tuas. Thank God that when I reached Tuas, there was no traffic, uh, or rather very minimal traffic, into the Malaysian immigration. Malaysian immigration, I passed it within five, seven minutes. After the Malaysian immigration, no traffic for about uh, two-thirds of uh, the bridge, and then the traffic started. Uh, but I thank God because uh, a lot of time uh, was, uh, you know, saved. Uh, and I think it took me about altogether 40 minutes from one immigration to the other, and then I was in Singapore, back in the hotel. Well, I shouldn't say back in the hotel. I was in the hotel by about 2 a.m., and, uh, yeah, fell asleep by 2.30, uh, almost 3 o'clock, and then got up at, at 6 uh, to get ready uh, for X singapore All right? I didn't preach in X singapore It was uh, Elder Ku Hin Hyong who preached, and he did a really, really good message. Uh, but when we walked into X singapore they were all so surprised. In fact, they said, wow, Pastor, what a surprise, you know. Uh, we missed you and, 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 and just love seeing you. And someone said, hey, Pastor, I didn't know you were preaching today. I said, no, I'm not. And then when Elder Kuin Hyong met me, he said, hey, why didn't you tell me you were coming? I would have allowed you to preach. I would have given up my pre preaching slot. And I said, exactly, I knew you were going to do that. So I, 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 I didn't want you to do that. Uh, I think I want to honor the fact that you are scheduled to preach uh, today. And uh, he did well. He did well. 
Uh, and uh, there were testimonies from, uh, there's a brother called David and, and, and John, Pastor John also, sharing uh, how God had moved so powerfully uh, over the course of the one week before that uh, when CFAN, CFAN stands for Christ for All Nations. And it's a ministry that was started by the amazing uh, Reinhard Bonke. Uh, I call him amazing because what a servant of God, uh, you know, used by, by God powerfully to win. I think uh, it's recorded that he uh, had led 70 million people to Christ. Uh, that's a lot. That's more uh, even of the, than the population in Malaysia. You know, that's double the population in Malaysia. Uh, so about, about 70, uh, maybe more. Uh, and uh, Sifan had a camp. It's called Fire Camp. And by the grace of God, it was held in the premises of Ex Singapore. And because uh, of, uh, you know, us opening up, Sifan actually allowed for a few of us uh, to join that camp for free. I think the price of that camp is $450. Sing dollars. Uh, so when they allow a few of our leaders to come for free, it was a very, very generous gesture. Uh, but uh, Pastor John, uh, David, and others that uh, went for that camp were so, 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 so blessed. And uh, God spoke, and John uh, and Joan uh, took me out for dinner, me and my wife out for dinner on a Monday night, uh, uh, you know, the, the following Monday, and, uh, you know, just shared with us all that God had done and confirmed with us that there are many things that were spoken by and at uh, CFAN uh, Fire Camp uh, that confirm uh, what God has been telling X Church in the last 10 years, like grow small to grow big uh, and all that. Uh, John, with tears running down his face, said, Pastor, I am so glad that God has been speaking to you so clearly about all the things that we're doing because hearing uh, all this confirmed at the fire camp with the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, just really, really uh, blessed him so, so much. So yeah, uh, that's uh, what happened uh, last weekend. And uh, uh, one of the highlights was that uh, we got to meet with uh, Pastor Let. Pastor Letitia, about a month and a half ago, uh, had, uh, 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 well, had a health scare. She came back from overseas and uh, as she was in the lift in the Changi Airport, uh, she fell uh, and hit her head on the floor and uh, started to bleed. But she was unconscious and only woke up in the hospital. What happened was she blacked out. She had a stroke. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, it was found out that she has three blockages in her heart. She hasn't gone for any uh, treatment for her heart yet but she has recovered uh, probably 99% from her stroke. Uh, she's able to walk now, talk, uh, eat, uh, and uh, we took her out for one of her first uh, outdoor meals uh, in the last one and a half, two months. And uh, all we wanted to do was just show her our love and uh, to be with her and to hear her story and to pray for her. And it looked like she was happy and she was glad and thankful that we were able to spend time. We uh, were able to also uh, bring uh, Ku Hin Hyong along for that dinner. And it was a really wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, we, we thought it was so precious to be able to spend that time with Pastor Lat and to also thank her for all that she's done. She is probably the oldest children church pastor in the world. 75-year-old children church pastor for a local church, uh, at Singapore, and she's been so faithful. Uh, for as many years as, as I've known her, as many years as X uh, Singapore has been around, which I think X Singapore is probably about 14 years old uh, now, and she has been our children's church pastor, and she's been so faithful. Now, of course, uh, she'll find it difficult uh, to carry on in that role, uh, and so others have risen up to help her to uh, lead and to serve X kids. Uh, but uh, we love you, Pastor Lad, and uh, we thank you for even spending time with us that night, allowing us the opportunity to be able uh, to eat with you and to tell you how much we love you and how much we appreciate you and all that you've done. And we are believing for God's best for you, that testimonies will happen, uh, signs and wonders will follow, miracles 
uh, will take place in your life uh, more in the days to come. Praise God. So that uh, was that. And uh, my wife and I had a good Monday uh, of uh, rest and Tuesday as well before we drove back to KL. And on Tuesday night, uh, I couldn't attend it, but we had our very first X-Men devotion. And it was, uh, you know, the speaker for the night was Elder Peng Ho. And I've been hearing wonderful testimonies of how well Peng Ho did. He brought the word, the word for the season, word for the year, word for X-Men devotion, and everybody was blessed. So thank you, Peng Ho, uh, for taking my place uh, to be the speaker for the very first AMD of 2024. And I saw pictures and photos of our men there uh, in strength. And uh, some had dinner before and had catch up with their huddles. Uh, and so that was really, really good. Now let me just bring this uh, first segment to a close uh, before we move on to our second and final segment. Uh, we had, my wife and I, had a good time uh, having lunch with Pastor Yvonne yesterday. Uh, she is one of our campus pastors and she is just doing amazing things uh, with colleges and universities. God has given her a bonus uh, to enter colleges and universities, to open doors and a real favour uh, with the management of all these colleges and universities. And uh, she's been really creating waves by the grace of God. Uh, and so it was great to catch up with her. But then towards the evening, I caught up with all three, our campus pastor, Pastor Stephen, and the two assistant campus pastors, Pastor Yvonne and Pastor John. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, it was a really, really good God time. We were, we were able to spend about, I think, almost uh, three hours together uh, and uh, just talking about, you know, what has happened since 18 months ago when, uh, you know, changes happened at Campus City and X Campus, and we, uh, you know, um, uh, brought, up, brought it up to speed uh, to, to where we are today. And then we started talking about the future, what the future could look like. Uh, we talked about, uh, you know, the upcoming camp a little bit. Uh, we talked about uh, Taylor's Chapel. I'm really excited for Ch Taylor's Chapel. It will be launched sometime in the middle of April. And uh, X Church, X Campus has been given the opportunity to lead that uh, and to facilitate that and to serve the Taylor's Chapel, which will be very, very new uh, in uh, Taylor's College, Taylor's University. And so we're looking forward to that, looking forward to people coming uh, from everywhere uh, and from all denominations and from all ministries and from all groups coming together, worshipping the Lord together. Uh, it's going to be anchored by mainly the full-time workers of uh, AYA and X Church. And we're looking forward. We're looking forward, you know, to preaching the word, studying the Bible, uh, and uh, sending, uh, you know, students and even lecturers out uh, to making a real difference in Taylor's University and college. And uh, who knows? Maybe people might even come from outside. Maybe uh, colleges nearby. Uh, maybe even um, young adults nearby who want to join us. Uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. And uh, I believe that Taylor's Chapel, out of that, will come out. Uh, greater things. Uh, I, I just, you know, I can't even imagine uh, what more God uh, will do, but I, 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 I can uh, uh, safely say that it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful history-making venture uh, that we are also glad to be part of. <coughs> so, excuse me. So, we talked a little bit about that. And, uh, uh, you know, all three of my leaders went away with a, a, a new sense of uh, you know, what the future holds and how we can work together and how we can be more united. So that's that. Uh, that ended uh, our day. And uh, I, you know, I fell asleep by, I don't know, probably about 11. I was really tired. It, it was a full day for me yesterday of renovations in my house. And uh, I had, had to help carry, clean, and, you know, just supervise the work, uh, go out to buy paint uh, and come back. And, uh, you know, so it was a... Tiring day, but it was a good day. And I was nursing a sore throat. Uh, and of course, it's much better today, probably 90% better. But, you know, it just tickles a little bit still. So uh, it, it, it brings about a cough every, you know, I don't know, every 10 minutes. Uh, but um, I'm so glad to be here uh, giving you this update. And I want to say thank you for praying for us, praying for Revo Iskandar especially. Uh, and uh, we're looking for greater days ahead. Uh, this is all for segment one.
And uh, we'll see you again at segment two. God bless you. For this year's X Teams Victory Camp, I'm Olivia. And I'm Asher. Hello? Hello. Saya dengar anda ingin mengadakan camp. Bolehkah anda kongsikan sedikit tentang camp ini? Yes, we are having a camp this year. Oh, what's the camp about? Well, the camp is about reaching out to all of our teams. Come and experience faith, fellowship, and fun together filled with inspiring worship impactful teachings, exciting activities, and the chance to build lasting connections. Oh, okay. Terima kasih. Bye-bye. Eh, Leah, Kim commander dah. Yes, and you are? Eh, but Kim, you are not a kid. Oh, it's only 250 ringgit. What a steal, right? Also, camp will be happening from the 30th of May to the 1st of June at Cannon Valley, Serenda. Oh, and yes, you can sign up using a QR code right here or on x.onl slash ATVC24. Eh, hey, I want to sign up. We are in the world. We are in the world. Hello? Um, why do I want to send my child to go to the camp? Hey. Olivia, got one parent ask what's so important about this camp. Uh, what do I say? Uh? Uh, I'm guessing I said. So, the reason why you should come to this camp is to embrace and grow in the spirit of community and joy as we deepen our faith and foundation in God. It's more than just a camp, it's a community. So, to all the teens in the house, I know you're all watching. Whip out your phones and sign up right now. Yes! We can't wait to see you there for we know that God's presence is going to be there and it's going to be just so, so amazing. That all may know. Amen! Amen. Hello, hello, hello and welcome back. Uh, to the Chin Up Show. This is episode number 20 and segment 2. Uh, segment 1, uh, as usual, uh, I gave updates of what God has been doing in and through my life for the past week. Now, I'm holding this uh, because I want to share this with you. Uh, this is a certificate and uh, it's been framed and Shirley handed it to me this morning. Uh, it is a certificate from and by... British Publishing House. Uh, so on one side of the certificate is just, uh, you know, my name and who gave it to me. And on another side, uh, uh, it, you know, they came. The British media uh, journalists came and interviewed me and uh, had put all my sort of achievements and accolades on the right-hand side. Now, uh, it was a shock to me when uh, British media uh, came the first time. Uh, because uh, you have to be recommended uh, to uh, even have um, the interviewer come to interview you. And uh, I'm not sure uh, something like uh, one of the Christian politicians uh, may have mentioned my name, and so they came. They came uh, and uh, they interviewed me and thought that uh, the life, um, the story, the life story was worthy uh, to be included into uh, their publication. So it's a very thick publication. Uh, it's called British Pedia. And I think uh, the one that I got, uh, the title was uh, British Pedia uh, 2020 uh, Successful People in Malaysia. Uh, and so uh, let me just read this to you. Uh, British Publishing House Certificate. Based on outstanding performance, Kenneth Chin, 2020, has been accepted as a member of BPH, 
British Publishing House Limited, successful people in Malaysia and Singapore, as from 6 December 2019. Uh, so this is one certificate. Uh, but what I didn't know is that uh, British Pedia went ahead and thought that uh, they should include me for two more years. Now, uh, there is something about British Pedia whereby uh, they only usually have you on for one year. And uh, if they don't think your story is worthy enough, uh, they won't put it uh, a following year, unless, of course, you have other achievements, and then they come and interview you again. Uh, but uh, just based on the 2020 uh, publication, they decided to put me on for another two more years. And so, uh, in the box that we received, uh, that Shirley brought today, there's actually two more of this. So, altogether three. Uh, so, one more says 2021, another one says 2022. Uh, so, I'm very thankful to God for this opportunity, for this uh, acknowledgement, uh, for uh, this uh, honour uh, by British, British Pedia. Uh, and uh, the latest is that I've also again been included uh, by British Pedia. We had to send a new journalist to uh, come and interview me because this time around, uh, they heard about uh, how uh, well we run our daycare center called Little Legends. And so, uh, as the founder of Little Legends, uh, they wanted to interview me. So, it's a totally separate uh, news altogether, separate reason why they came to interview me. Uh, and uh, because, although I founded, by the grace of God, Little Legends, I uh, am not the one running it. And so, Pastor Sarah has run it so well that it's got the attention of people and uh, British media came. And so, I said, why don't you also interview uh, Sarah? And they did. Uh, and they want to put Little Legends on uh, as one of uh, the more uh, well-run and recognizable uh, daycare. So, cool, right? <laughs> X Church, those of you who are listening to me, that uh, Little Legends, even though it's small, it's only about 35 students. We can't take any more because the venue doesn't allow more. Otherwise, we would probably be about 50, maybe even 100 by now uh, because of how well Little Legends is run. We also take in babies. So someone asked me just recently, uh, what, what are the, what's the age group in Little Legends? I said zero. <laughs> when I first heard zero, because it's actually what the government gives, zero to four. Uh, and I think we are able to do five or so now. Uh, zero just means baby, baby. Uh, and so um, the babies come. And uh, why uh, taking care of babies is difficult is because you need attention, uh, sort of 24-7. And so sometimes the staff that we have in Little Legends, uh, they're giving 90% of their attention to just one baby. And then, you know, uh, maybe they look around and help the other children, but 90% uh, of the time it's just one uh, staff to one baby. And so a lot of people don't do it because it might not be as lucrative uh, in terms of business. But we do it because uh, Pastor Sarah is really passionate about helping people. And when she sees a parent come and they are like sometimes even begging, uh, because if, they, if no one takes care of their child, they can't go back to work and all that, right? So Pastor Sarah does it really very much as a compassion. Uh, and yes, they do still pay, but we don't sometimes make a lot of money or sometimes we don't make money at all from taking care of babies uh, because there's more work and more that we give out than we, we take in. Uh, in terms of uh, monetary uh, profits. Uh, but we are glad. Uh, that, that, that's probably why uh, people, when they uh, have uh, tasted Little Legends, you know, the word that goes around is that, is that Little Legends is really, really quite awesome. Uh, so, uh, that would mean that after the interview, uh, I will also be included in British Pedia 2024. Eh? 2024 or 2023? Yeah, so it will be out in 2024, but it, it was, it was uh, for, anyway. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe 2024, okay? Something like that, okay? So that would mean that by the grace of God, I would be featured four times in uh, British media. So I share that with all of you. Uh, thank you uh, for, you know, all your support. And thank you to British media also for their recognition, their honour, and uh, for, uh, you know, uh, putting me on uh, with... Um, uh, with such, uh, yeah, just, just, just a generous uh, and, and honouring gesture on their part. All right. So, um, let me just move on now to talk very quickly uh, to continue uh, 
just the thought on how to reach and raise young people. The topic for the last five uh, Chin Up shows, including this one and probably another three or four more, uh, is the topic is understanding youth and revisioning youth ministry. I know a lot of people struggle, especially smaller churches, and there are many, many more smaller churches than there are large churches. And even the large churches struggle uh, with a success rate of reaching young people. So uh, when I was thinking about it, thinking about uh, the topics I would like to do for uh, Chin Up Show, uh, I thought about it and uh, I've, I really sense the Lord wanting me uh, to share my experience and knowledge, the little that I know uh, about how to reach young people and raise them effectively uh, for the Lord and to be responsible uh, contributors to the church and to the nation. Let me just uh, give you a first thought, okay? Parents and even pastors watching this, we've got to learn to disciple our children. That's not usually a word that we use, disciple children. Um, discipline children, yes. Uh, nurture children, yes. Uh, care for children, yes. But many parents don't see themselves as pastors in their homes and therefore their children as their disciples. And I want parents to begin to think like that because when you think like that, it helps you to behave because uh, as a pastor, uh, I know that there are people watching me on a daily basis. And so there are sometimes I would like to do something and I think about it twice, three times and go like, what would the people think? How would I be a good example to them? How would I be like Jesus to them? And that's really the crux of discipleship. Imitate me as I imitate Christ, 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. Uh, you want to lead everybody that you are discipling to Jesus. And yet parents don't always think that way. They, they think like parents normally think. But uh, I want to introduce you, if you don't already know or haven't heard yet, let's all learn to disciple. So yes, pastors will disciple. So the youth pastors will also disciple young people. But we need to work together, parents. We need to work together with our youth pastors, youth leaders, and together disciple our children. Uh, you've got to understand that your children are watching you. Your children uh, don't just want to be taught they, they want to catch uh, what you want to teach them. And usually, it is, it's not, as we said, principles are not taught, it's caught. And so, we want to be able to have that mindset uh, and uh, to spend time uh, even opening up the Word of God with them uh, and teaching them from the Bible. But more than just teaching them, you want to show them the example of how Jesus would speak how he would act uh, if he was here. But he is here, isn't, isn't he? Isn't Jesus here? He's here in the form of you. He's here in the form of me. That's why my prayer every morning is, Lord, make me the Jesus that Malaysia needs. You see, because I'm totally convinced, totally convinced, that when people see Jesus, hear Jesus, taste Jesus, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who puts his trust in him. Uh, Psalm 34 verse 8. Touch Jesus and are touched by Jesus. If people can see Jesus, hear Jesus, taste Jesus, touch Jesus and are touched by Jesus. I, this is in my memory already because I prayed every morning. I totally believe that people's lives will be touched and transformed. No one can remain the same after seeing Jesus, after hearing Jesus, after tasting Jesus, touching Jesus, and, and touched by Jesus. So, <clears throat> Jesus himself is not here today. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, the Bible says. But he calls us to be his followers, to imitate him as, you know, uh, 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 we want others to Im imitate us. So Jesus lives in us and we become the Jesus that Malaysia needs. So I am totally convinced that Malaysia will see a revival when Jesus arrives in Malaysia. 
So sometimes we say Jesus arise. Jesus wants to arise in you. He wants to arise in me. Very important. So, I don't just want to be Kenneth Chin. I want to be the Jesus that Malaysia needs. Because you see, if I don't speak like Jesus, then Malaysia will never hear. And if I don't uh, act like Jesus, then Malaysia will never see. And if I don't minister like Jesus and preach like Jesus and do what Jesus has done, then Malaysia will never get a chance to know this Jesus. Malaysia knows this Jesus through me and through you. And so when we read the Bible, we get a sense of how Jesus lived, how he walked, how he stood for truth, how he loved God, how he loved people, how he prayed for the sick. I'm asking you a question right now. Do you think when you look into the mirror, do you look like Jesus? Because that's what Malaysia needs. When you talk the last two hours, did you talk anything that Jesus himself would talk if he was sitting here? So if you don't talk like Jesus, then people won't hear Jesus. If you don't act like Jesus, love like Jesus, then people don't get a chance. <coughs> so excuse me. So Malaysia will be revived if they can see Jesus, hear Jesus, taste Jesus, touch Jesus, and be touched by Jesus. But how are they going to see if you and I don't live like him? So my prayer every morning is, Lord, make me the Jesus that Malaysia needs for revival to happen. Make me the Jesus that Malaysia needs. And Lord, I pray, raise up many more Jesus in this nation. That's the only way revival is going to come. So uh, every parent listening to me now, every pastor, be the Jesus that our children need. Be the Jesus that our teenagers need. Be the Jesus that our young people need. And let's do this together. Let's do this together. Now, I want to speak today not only to uh, parents and not only to teens. I want to speak about the parent-pastor synergy. Because sometimes parents think that by leaving their children there at the youth service Friday night or Saturday afternoon, uh, you know, we hope for a miracle to happen. Whatever it is that you can't do at home, you hope the youth pastor or the youth leader can do in just two, three hours with your young person. Suddenly, like for example, your young person has no manners at home. You think that just because they spend two hours in the youth group, they will suddenly have manners. You know? Uh, you think that uh, the, 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 the young person, your young person, uh, uh, you know, uh, doesn't have discipline at home, they suddenly will catch discipline uh, by being in the youth group once a week, two hours, three hours. Now, we've got, uh, and sometimes pastors might also like blame everything on parents. Uh, you know, what do you think want me to do? I, I can't do miracles in just two hours and we blame parents. Now, I want to bring parents and pastors to a place whereby we're not blaming each other and we're not also putting all our hope on each other. We need to work together. Now, the bigger responsibility, of course, is on parents because the young people spend more time with you. But youth pastors and youth leaders also have a place and a part to play. So I'm going to give you five things now before I close uh, episode number 20. Five things that I believe parents and pastors need to do more of. We need to work together. We are a team, people. We are a team. We've got to work closer. Don't blame the pastor. Don't blame the parent. Don't fight the pastor. Don't fight the parent. Don't say you're lousy, good for nothing. Don't. The first T I'm going to offer you right now, work as a team. Parents, learn to talk to the youth pastors and the youth leaders. Share with them over a cup of coffee or Milo and, and say, you know, this is what my kid needs. Pastors, share with parents, this is what your kid shared with me at uh, youth group. Uh, let's work this together. You know, don't, parent, please don't try to say something to the pastor and try to, you know, gain points with your teenager. Pastors don't try to gain points with the teenager by saying, oh, yeah, yeah, teenager and pastor, we are close friends. And when the teenager says, please don't tell my mother, huh? you say, okay, sure, I will, never, I will never tell your mother. Why? Because I'm cool, right? Your parents are boring. I'm cool. And so I'm going to work with you, old teenager. No, don't do that. I'm telling you right now, you can't do it alone. 
you got to do it with the parents, and parents, you got to do it with your pastors. Uh, the, the, the teenager is not your ally. It's not your first ally. <laughs> the, the teenager could even be your enemy. Now, I'm saying that loosely, okay? No one is an enemy here. We're all together doing this. But parents and pastors must be allies because you have the same intention. You want to help that teenager grow and become the best that they can be. So number one, parents, pastors, you are a, come on, team. Team. Do it together. Don't fight each other. And don't action with each other, you know. Don't show off with each other. No. Don't say, oh, the teenager like me better. Don't do that. <coughs> You're not in competition. Number two, there must be trust. There's not enough trust between parents and pastors. And of course, with the teenager too, I know. Now, when I say team, it actually should be three-way. Pastor, parent, and team. Work together. When I say trust, I also mean work together. Uh, the team needs trust. The parent needs trust. The, the, the pastor needs trust. But pastor and parent must trust each other as well. The intentions, you must remember the intentions are always good. Which parent wants evil for their child? Which, which pastor? Which pastor wants bad for the teenager? No. So you must uh, approach each other and say, I don't know about your efforts and I don't know about your ideas and I don't know about, uh, you know, some of your craziness, you know. Uh, uh, but youth pastor, youth leader, as a parent, I want to say I trust you because I know you want the best for my child. And the pastor should say to the parent, I trust you too. Even though your, your children come to me and say, ah, yeah, my parents boring lah. Ah, yeah, my father grounded me yesterday lah because uh, I, I went out with my boyfriend uh, until after midnight uh, and I'm only 12 and my father doesn't even know I have a boyfriend. And he, when he found out, he grounded me. Uh, please, don't, uh, youth leader, youth pastor, don't say, Ay, uh, what kind of parent is this? Come on, la, be more modern. La. You know, why you be so old-fashioned? Uh, you know, let your child go out like 12 years old and have a boyfriend. And go, no, no. Listen, please, don't do that. Don't do that. Trust. Trust that the parents love their children and want the best. Now, if you work with trust, it's going to get better. Number three, be thankful. Yeah, thankfulness is powerful. The Bible teaches all of us to have thanksgiving. Enter his gate, gates with thanksgiving. You know what? You can't even approach God huh, if you don't come with thanksgiving. Because the first thing you need to come with is thanksgiving. Enter his gates. That means you can't even enter his gates without thanksgiving. So that's why a lot of people say, I don't feel God. Lah. You know, I don't feel I can approach him. No, you just approach him with thanksgiving. You must start with that. Lord, I feel bad. I feel lousy. I feel pain, I feel hurt, but I'm going to come into your presence not with complaints, only thanksgiving. I'm so thankful for the life you gave me, right? All that, right? Thanksgiving is powerful. In fact, when we take communion, you know what the power of communion is? I believe the power of communion is remembering, right? Uh, do this as often as you remember, right? Uh, me. So communion is about remembering what Jesus did for us. But what happens when we remember? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So the real true power of taking communion is to be thankful that what this is what Jesus did for us. The true power is thanksgiving. You think the power is in the biscuit? You think the power is in the cup and the ribena? <laughs> no. The power is the act of faith and saying, Lord, thank you. So every time you take communion, it's thank you, right? It's thank you, right? Lord, uh, you can forgive me. How come I cannot forgive my brother? Right? So you remember Christ, all he's done, and you are thankful. You're thankful. So uh, parents, pastors, be thankful for each other. Uh, Lord, I thank you that even though it's once a week only, three hours, those youth pastors, those youth leaders, they pay the price to be with my teenager, and they love them, and they give them the word of God, and they play with them, and they take them out, missions, community work. They want to make my teenager better. And so... I've got to say thank you, Lord. Yes, I might not always totally agree with their creative ways. I might not totally agree that they go overnight and stay uh, for like a overnight in somebody's house 
uh, you know, all girls, uh, pajama party, all boys, uh, you know, underwear. But I don't know. Uh, 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 I don't know. I don't know what boys uh, go to sleep with. Okay, but uh, but uh, yeah, you might not. You know, why are they taking my children away for one night? You know, uh, you know, be thankful. Okay, you might not totally agree with all the ways, but be thankful because again, back to intentions. All our intentions are good. I've never seen one youth pastor who has a bad intention towards their teenager. Never. Uh, and I've never seen a parent also uh, who doesn't love their child. Okay? Number four. Talk. Please, pastors and parents, talk. Talk it out. Uh, you know, invite your... Don't only any time a problem when you call your youth pastor and scold him or scold her. Anytime your, your, your young person is late one hour... All right, hey, got traffic jam, lah, Kuala Lumpur. You know, they're sending your child back already, right? Good, right? They're on the, in the church van, sending them back, half an hour late, one hour late. Now you're scolding the youth pastor, you're scolding the driver. Don't do that. Don't do that. So, you know, I, I think uh, most of the time, my uh, youth leaders and youth pastors, uh, you know, <clears throat> they get nervous uh, when they get a call from you because parents hardly call to say thank you, hardly call to give you. Uh, 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 comments and, and praise and hey, thank you, man. At least you sent my son back, you know. I, I, you know, I, I, I didn't have to go to the gym. No, hardly any thanks, right? Hardly. So please, don't just call to complain and to bombard and to tell them, you know, what kind of lousy thing you're doing. My children are, you know, no manners. Why do you think your, your, your children learn no manners in the, the, the church, is it? Your children already had no manners in the house, right? No, come on. So you don't get the youth pastor calling you and say, hey, what kind of no manners children you're sending to my youth group on Saturday? No, don't do that. Please start talking. You know, table, mama, coffee, tea, invite them to your house, whatever it is, okay? Guys, come on, you can do it. I don't think any youth pastor will say no, especially if you encourage them. Don't straight away bombard them. So you say, hey, uh, pastor or youth leader, my child has some special needs, lah. you know? Uh, and uh, that's why he's acting up this way. And let the youth pastor understand uh, how, you, how you... You don't tell how your youth pastor is going to know. Your youth pastor or youth leader is probably going to think your child is extra active. Maybe when you gave birth to your child, you ate so much uh, folic acid, you know? Because everybody says folic acid is very good. So, the, you, so, so you take... Instead of one pill a day, you take three pills a day. And then suddenly it's overactive child, okay? Uh, and then so you're, you know... Uh, always get disciplined in the youth group. I don't know, or, 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 or sit out. He cannot play this game because this game will rouse up, you know, the activeness and then he will start shooting everybody with his toy gun. And, 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 and so, uh, you got to talk. Hey, then the youth leader go, oh, I see, no wonder. Okay, okay, brother, I tell you. Oh, what, what do you suggest I do? And then the parent will say, hey, uh, actually, uh, if you play, uh, you know, uh, 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 the, the shark song, uh, uh, what shark song is that? Baby shark song. Ah, I, although the, the, my, my child is already 18 years old, every time you play the, the baby shark song, there will be a calmness that will come upon my child. You know, talk it out. Lah. Talk it out with your, 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 your youth uh, 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 leader. And so your youth leader, when they see, wow, this 18-year-old going crazy, they will play a baby shark song by the background, and suddenly your child comes down. Great! And you know how they know to do it? Because you talked it out. Okay? Hey, please don't give extra chocolate. You give extra chocolate, okay, so the youth pastor is giving out chocolate every week. Right? But this child goes bonkers when he tastes one uh, uh, chocolate, you know, it's bouncing off, uh, you know, uh, the walls. Uh, and, and so, what do you do? You say, please don't give chocolate. What, what can I give, you know? Give uh, sawakana, something like that, you know? Sawakana, they'll be all right. Sawakana, you know, suddenly the one, they can memorize scripture. Okay? So, you tell, because your child got special needs, sawakana is the way for scriptures uh, to be memorized. So, you give more sawakana, and the person can, you know, you know, you know, like, guys, I know, I, I'm partly joking just to get you guys to smile. But I just want to let you know, talk. Talk it out. That's uh, good. Yeah. Pastor, as a parent of a child with special needs, I want to confirm all that you're sharing. Oh, good. Actually, it's very good, uh, very good advice on uh, con like conversation and yes. communicating. And I think it's good that when people are aware, then they know what to do because it can be very unique from child to child. Exactly. Just in case anybody thinks that pastors just you know, giving examples, but these are very good examples. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Alvin. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is, this is important. And the talk, the talk can also happen three-way, okay? All these points I'm giving you is three-way. Uh, can also happen three-way. means also involve your child, involve your teenager, involve your, your youth, all right? But please talk it through, talk it out. Remember, you're on the same team. You know, um, what I've seen managers do, 
uh, when their team is playing on the field uh, against uh, another team, right? Uh, they'll say to their team members, let's say half time, uh, uh, team is losing 2 0. But uh, I've heard managers say to their team, uh, guys, I know you're all very good players, individually, you're top players, but you're not communicating on the field. Hey, pass the ball. Hey, here I am. Hey, you know, uh, don't pass it yet. Someone is coming behind you. Uh, hey, pass it, lob it, whatever, you know. Uh, 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 even football teams and any team, they will tell their team, you must communicate, you must talk. So listen, pastors, parents, you are and we are a team. And we need to talk. And together, we can make a difference in our young people's lives. Now, this goes even to youth leaders in the same group, right? Sometimes youth leaders themselves are not talking. Youth leaders, please start talking. And parents, father and mother also not talking. All right? Mother, you know, maybe things that the teenager likes her the, the most. Don't like the father that much. Oh, so you, you bungle, lah, happy, you know? Hey, I'm my child's favorite. Don't play favoritism. I'm telling you, the, the worst thing you can offer your child lah, is a broken relationship. Father, mother, you must be one. You're a team. So please talk it through. Talk it through. Where you want to send your child to study, what you want, how you want to discipline your child. Talk it through, please, please. Because two is better than one. All right? And finally, training. Training. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I'm, I've, I've dedicated so many weeks and so many more weeks to come to uh, the uh, topic of understanding youth and revisioning youth ministry is because it's true that parents don't have parent school to go to. No. Tell me which parent has gone to school to be a parent. All right? We go to school uh, to be lawyers. Three and a half years, we got a law degree, and then we retire at 50 years old. We go to school to be engineers. Four years. Then we retire as engineers at 60. We never retire as parents, right? No? And yet, uh, we never study. We never study. No degree, no paper, no qualification. We all learn by trial and error. Some people more error than trial. Uh, but, you know, I'm with you. I'm for you, guys. Uh, chin up. You know, we, we love young people. But it's not just about young people, right? It's about the people that care for them and come around them. So, uh, this uh, last few episodes and the next few episodes is dedicated to training. So that if you can watch this and go like, okay, I read, I never been to school, but I, I now hear you. I hear you share with me about, you know, some of these points, some of the psyche of young people, what makes them tick, what they want, what they need, how I need to work with other people because as is said before in, in Africa, there's a saying, it takes a whole village to raise a child. Have you heard that before? A whole village is needed <coughs> to raise a child. I haven't even touched on teachers yet. Right? Parents, pastors, and teachers. Even teachers can be involved. Parents can talk to teachers. Teachers can talk to pastors. Let's come around this child because this child's life is so precious and let's do it, do it as a community. Do it as a gang. If we gang up on the child with loving intentions, we will win. The child won't win. The child will win only because they are learning good things. But the child won't win. When I say the child won't win, means they won't win in their rebellion. They won't win in their bad manners. They won't win in their, you know, trying to come against you. No, uh, in their uh, uh, bad behavior. All right? The reason why teenagers win over their parents and over their pastors is because we are working in silo. And we are working alone. And the teenager gangs up on us. Um, and sometimes manipulates our feelings. But we as adults should lovingly gang up on our teenagers and give them what they don't even know they need. But when they're growing up, and they've grown up, they will say, thank you, Dad. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Teacher, for all that you've done because I'm a better person today because you believed in me enough to invest into my life. So we need training. And uh, parents, I know you have challenges. Pastors, you have challenges. Teachers, you have challenges. Uh, let's open up to each other and share notes. Let's compare notes and share notes and share experiences and share knowledge uh, and help each other out uh, so that we can all do this better. And it will all augur well for that teenager and for that youth group 
and uh, I am so glad to be able to bring this uh, to you. It's just a very short uh, training today, uh, but I think it's important. So here we go again uh, as I draw to a close. Parents, pastors, teachers even, and teens, if you're listening to this, we are a team. We need to trust each other more, be thankful, begin to talk it out, and go for training. And, you know, watch all these episodes. I think we'll probably be doing a maximum of 10 episodes dedicated to understanding youth and youth ministry. Uh, why don't you, uh, uh, you know, just go ahead, watch our uh, previous uh, uh, episodes and uh, next few episodes, and don't, don't rush through it. Uh, take your time. Study it. Uh, and if you have any questions in the future, I I'm going to look at my directors and producers here. We are going to want to also do Q&A in the future so they can send in. Uh, is there some kind of uh, uh, address they can send it to? Info, I-N-F-O, info at A-Y-A dot O-R-G dot M-Y. Info at A-Y-A dot O-R-G dot M-Y. Please write to us, give us your questions, and we will do our best to give you the answers that will be of great help to you, okay? So I think we've done five, this is the sixth episode on uh, understanding youth and revisioning youth ministry. Uh, you probably will have questions by now if you are following, and then we will, in the next three, four, five episodes, uh, take those questions, answer them, and also give you more points as the Lord leads us. So this is uh, Kenneth Chin, once again, on behalf of my team and I, signing off from Chin Up episode uh, 20. Thank you for joining us. Please uh, subscribe and give us a like and leave us a comment or even give us a question. Until the next time, Thank you again. God bless you.